Today, we are talking all about contraception, birth control. Ooh. <laughs> hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Hannah Witten, and one of the things that I love talking about is contraception. And this video is sponsored by My Contraception. I love talking about contraception. I think it is really important that we have these kinds of discussions because it is not a one size fits all situation out there. And also contraception can be a really tricky subject because it's your body, it's your life. Like these are important decisions. I know that I've personally found it really valuable since talking a lot about contraception and hormones and all of that stuff online and like hearing other people's experiences. It's just so crucial that we are given all of the information about different methods that is available to us so that we can make the best decision for ourselves. If you'd like to hear more about my own personal hormone diary journey and the different kinds of contraceptives that I've been on, there's a whole playlist for that. I got you covered. So My Contraception is a new platform filled with tons of advice and information all about contraception. It's got this amazing tool where you can see all of the different methods of contraception at a glance and you can see its effectiveness, ease of use, whether it's hormonal, non-hormonal, and you can kind of like compare different methods that way. Very, very handy. So as part of the campaign, I went to Toronto to meet with internationally known gynecologist, Dr. Kostescu, and got to sit down with him and interview him and basically ask him all of the questions that I had and all of the questions that you had about contraception. This was such a cool experience because other than like a five to 10 minute appointment with my GP, I haven't had a chance to like sit down with a gynecologist, with an expert and just be like, hey, please answer all my questions. And he was so open and willing to have this conversation with me and so passionate about the subject matter, but of course he would be after all of the years <laughs> spent studying it. So it was an absolute honor and privilege to have this conversation with him. And I'm gonna let past Hannah and Dr. Kostescu take it away. I got to chat all about contraception with Dr. Kostescu, especially IUC, intrauterine contraception, as people are less likely to have IUC methods discussed by their doctor. Hello, Dr. Kostescu, so amazing to chat with you and come all the way to Canada to have this conversation. Yes, I know, please call me Dustin. Yeah, okay. and we're so happy to have you here, honestly. Call me Hannah. Great. It's great. Um, so we're gonna chat a lot about contraception, great. which is a topic very near to my heart and yours as well yes. as a birth control expert. Yeah, yeah. You know, people think birth control is easy, but the reality is, you know, it takes a lot of time to go to school to be a birth control nerd, uh, and I certainly <laughs> am one of them. But you know, we also want to answer as many questions as we yeah. can. Uh, you know, a birth control method someone's not comfortable using or wants to stop early because of side effects, you know, that, that that's not the right method for them, right? And so it's really about working together. And I think it's great that you're communicating with people, getting the message out there because, you know, we have questions yeah. and it can be hard to find the time um, or even just the, the sort of courage to actually bring up a question or challenge yeah. a healthcare provider. And I think it can feel like such a minefield yes. because even if you ask like the people in your life, your friends and your family who um, are also using contraception in whatever way, shape or form, mm -hmm. it affects everyone so differently, yeah. especially in terms of like side effects or like the kind of lifestyle that you have, mm -hmm. whether different types would work for you. Um, so it, it unfortunately is not a one size fits all. It's Definitely. almost like there needs to be an individual kind of contraception for yeah. every single person with a uterus on the planet. Absolutely. Um, so I asked a bunch of my followers on Instagram what questions they would have for a birth control expert. The first one is quite a general one. How do I know what is the right method for me? So th there's, there's two main approaches. I think the first is um, sort of a timeline based approach. So one of the first questions I'll ask someone is, you know, when do you foresee wanting to have children, you know, mm. in the future or ever? And you know, most of the patients we see are really not planning a pregnancy in the immediate future. And so- They're like, I'm a, here because yeah. I don't want to get pregnant. Absolutely. <laughs> right, so thinking about a, a Canadian teenager, uh, very similar to, to an English one, um, they might become sexually active around 16, is sort of the average age of first intercourse. Um, but they're really not planning to have the first kid until around 29, 30. So mm -hmm. uh, sort of this 13 year gap, you know, from what we call their coital debut in the business, or basically when you start becoming sexually active. The what, debut? Yeah, the coital debut. The it's coital like the, debut. 
Maybe it's I like the curtain it. rises, you know. <laughs> there's a fanfare. Yeah, um, I've actually yeah. been using like sexual debut more often Absolutely. than like using virginity. Yeah. That word. Oh yeah, yeah. We you know. I mean, certainly if somebody wants to use that word, we would, but, mm -hmm. but absolutely, I mean, it means so many things. And, you know, from a birth control perspective, really, I just am worried about sex that could get you pregnant yes, as opposed to the other fun ways to, uh, to do it. You know, when someone's thinking that they want to not have a pregnancy for a year or more, or they don't foresee any, you know, children, then really that's where the conversation starts around long acting methods. So mm -hmm. those methods that we don't need to administer any more often than once a year. And so uh, you're usually looking at intrauterine contraceptives or coils um, and uh, implants, as well as potentially for some people, even permanent options. Uh, some young women you know, do mm. want surgery, uh, but you know, most are looking for something that's convenient and kind of closes the door, but doesn't lock it. Yeah. So if timeline is one of the things yeah. that you're thinking about when figuring out what method yeah. is best for you, what is the other thing? Yeah. So I think the other thing is really around um, intention and, and maybe acceptance of an unintended pregnancy so mm. you know uh, for some people maybe they had an infertility in the past you know and I've, I've delivered their their child and they're saying well you know if fate were to bestow us with a pregnancy even if it wasn't timed we would be very happy with that and so maybe for them you know condoms or even kind of nothing you know would be an option mm -hmm. um, but again you know student really wanting to not have a pregnancy finish their studies or just somebody who really doesn't envision themselves as a parent right now um, where an unintended pregnancy would be quite unacceptable to them. You know, we really want to kind of help them. And it, but yeah, between timeline and importance, you know, that really helps us narrow the conversation between, you know, kind of short and long. And then from there, you know, we can start presenting kind of the menu options, <laughs> you know. But, but you know, you don't have an hour to listen to me talk about every single option one by one, you know, nor does your healthcare provider. So, you know, the more we can work together to kind of narrow that list and then focus our conversation on the differences, I think makes for a more fulsome discussion. So I really like this question. It's like, we hear, um, that a lot of people want to feel in control of their contraception. Um, what are the best methods to be in control? Yeah, so some of that kind of goes back to our previous conversation around some people see control as their ability to take something every day, they can witness the pack, they mm -hmm. set an alarm on their phone, and that's their sort of daily affirmation that, that they are taking steps to prevent pregnancy yeah. um, and maybe treat some other reasons that they're they're using yeah. contraception. They also might feel like they have more control over when and if they have a period. Absolutely, yes. Mm -hmm. And and in Canada alone, 60% of patients will use um, their short acting methods in such a way to time their period. So mm -hmm. you've got a trip coming up, maybe those sugar pills kind of get thrown off to the side for a little <laughs> bit. Um, you know, that's really important and a lot of gynecologists will recommend and continuous use of, of pills for other medical issues. Mm -hmm. So taking that control and running with it, I think is really important. This next question is very important to me. Uh, something that I'm very passionate about. Um, can you please tell us what does perfect versus typical use of contraception oh. mean? Okay, well, <laughs> there's no perfect man and there's no perfect use, right? Yeah. I mean, um, perfect use failure rates are somewhat of an ethereal concept. They're based on clinical trials. Uh, where only the patients that perfectly use their, psych their pills every single day and don't use any other form of contraception um, in a clinical study where they're paid for it um, basically have their pregnancy rates uh, followed. The problem is that um, you know, unless you're in a clinical trial, you're not necessarily going to be perfect use, right? Mm -hmm. And so many uh, groups, including our OBGYN societies, for instance, really have discouraged clinicians from even talking about perfect use. It's it's not a clinically meaningful mm -hmm. outcome. And, but and, that's the yeah. percentage that's always thrown around. Right. Like, it's 98% yeah. effective. Yeah, for some methods, right? Yeah. For some methods, there's a, there's a very divergent uh, difference between yeah. typical and well, perfect use. Well, that's the difference between like, right. Do you just get it sticking for yeah. 10 years or do you have to remember to take something every right. day or every Absolutely. week? Absolutely. I think the important thing with typical use failure rates is it's it's real life, it's your side effects, it's your tolerance, it's mm -hmm. forgetting. Um, and Travel. Absolutely right, travel. And, and it's really about, you know, um, the reality that it's still way better than doing nothing. You know, mm -hmm. it's still a not common outcome. But, but also, you, this is what you can realistically expect, right? You know, one out of 11 will have a pregnancy if they're on a short-acting method yeah. in a year. Um, and, and we're here to support you if that happens, right? You yeah. know, there's, there's options for you. Um, but again, is that a, a number you're comfortable with, you know, mm -hmm. on a day-to-day -day basis? And if not, you, know, you look at something else. So one of the questions that's come up a lot from um, my followers on Instagram was, what is 
the difference between the hormonal coil and the copper coil. Okay. How do they work? Yeah. So we consider the two of them to sort of belong to a family, but they're really quite unrelated in terms of their mechanism and what they have to offer. Um, maybe let's start by talking about their shared benefits. So shared by yeah, ex exactly. <laughs> yeah, they're shaped like a T, right? Yeah. Uh, you know, we don't really have coil shaped coils anymore, um, but of historical significance, they used to be a little bit more rounded. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. Um, all of them are basically um, plastic T shaped devices that either have um, a hormone on it in a little reservoir or they have copper on it that are just basically wound around um, yeah. either the arms or just the, the body of it. Um, an intrauterine device of any type is very effective at preventing pregnancy, um, regardless of how it works. And so the pregnancy rates are less than 1% uh, with both perfect and typical use. So we talked a bit about that before, mm. but you know, but there once- there isn't a difference because once it's in, like correct. you as the person with it in, yeah. isn't using it. Right. Yeah. Um, and there's very subtle differences between them. Um, hormonals are maybe a little less position dependent than a, than a copper. So in terms of oh, just how okay. perfect it has to be fitted and, and things like that. Um, but Wait, so the copper one has to be fitted a bit. It, if like it's sitting low, um, say on an ultrasound or something like that, oh. then um, it may not be working as well as one that's perfectly placed. Uh, whereas the hormonal ones, because the hormones are there, whether it's you know right at the very top yeah. or a teeny little smidge below, oh, yeah. it's actually working equally effectively. So we don't have to be quite as fussed about it in mm -hmm. terms of in terms of that. Um, copper, um, it's kind of a funny mechanism. But actually, people don't like to think about. They always wonder how does it work. Um, it's important to know all of these work pre-fertilization. You know, for people where it's very important for them not to use a method of birth control that would interrupt a pregnancy. Um, yes. uh, it works pre-fertilization, okay? So the copper ions are sitting there, they're floating uh, in the uterus, and basically as the sperm um, swim up past that, the copper ions are actually kind of toxic to them. So one of two things happens, you either kind of zap them, me. like Star Wars, yeah, yeah, um, you know, so basically little lasers kind of pointing at them. Or um, the some of them actually just are kind of rendered impotent if you'll believe it. So they, even if they survive- Is it because of the electrical charge? Yeah, it's- it, like, is this when it gets like super like yeah, totally, physics where it's like neutrons, electrons? Totally great nerdy stuff, right? Okay. Yeah. So these little positive copper ions affect what's called the acrosome reaction. Uh, I know, right? I know. <laughs> this is like, I love this stuff. I mean, 15 years of post-secondary to talk to people about sperm, <laughs> right? Um, so so basically the, the sperm has to do a very special thing to actually embed into the egg. Mm -hmm. And if you can't do that, then you're just a sperm that's has no purpose. Um, oh. And so sometimes, you know, the survivors still can't actually um, get to the egg on time. The copper may also make the egg less likely to be fertilized. And, but again, these are sort of pre-fertilization things. So so it, it doesn't actually happen. You don't have a pregnancy. A lot of people have this question. I think it creates a lot of frustration. Okay. Male contraception. Okay. Like we have been having such an in-depth conversation yeah. about all of these different things like, how to make the right choice of what's right for you and all the different things that could, um, you know, that you have to consider. Yeah. And that takes a lot of mental energy, yeah. a lot of actual time, like going to appointments yep. and it's a whole thing. It's a complete faff, Definitely. which is maybe a very British thing to say. <laughs> it's an absolute faff. But it's the people with the wombs that are right. doing all of that. So what what's going on? You know, I think the, the challenge is that we just, if you look at all the contraceptives that we have, less than a third of them are sort of male-driven methods. And the male-driven methods we have aren't very good. Condoms, right, which I said before, you know, 88% will get pregnant in a year just using condoms alone. Yeah. Withdrawal, which is actually the third most common method of contraception used in most developed nations. Wow. So it's the pill, uh, condoms, and pulling out, right? Um, and you know, again, that's- vasectomy. Right, and vasectomy, right? That's the other one. It's like two extremes. Right. And so, uh, you know, it's, it, it is a real challenge. Um, we know that the people who end up having the pregnancy are disproportionately affected by pregnancy. And so I do think that there is still some value in, in knowing that, you know, people with the uterus have the most control over their own reproductive wow. destiny. So we would never want to, to eliminate that, but, you know, cisgender men have really been given a free pass to kind of defer all of these decisions, right? There are some studies being done looking at male hormonal contraception. You know, we, we're hopeful that things are, are going to improve and, and they work on very similar principles to mm -hmm. modern day birth control pills. You know, I've heard about like a gel that yeah. you can rub into your arms and then also like a like a non-surgical vasectomy, yeah. like a Basically, gel that you inject into the tubes. Yeah, that there's a little polymer. Really cool. Yeah, you know, the, the big question we have is, if, if even if we have all of these options, you know, 
will will people be motivated to start using them? And you know, I think that's where you know influencers like you are going to be really important to really lead that change and, and mm -hmm. actually hearing some more voices from from guys who want to right, to avoid pregnancy. Yeah. You know, I think it's a really important thing. But you know, I think in the foreseeable future, I have to be brutally honest. I mean, we've kind of got what we've got. We've got good options, but we're just not there with the male methods. Yeah. So if someone is using the IUS or an IUD, right. can they use tampons or a menstrual cup? Yes. So in the first couple of days after putting an IUS in, sometimes we recommend just holding off. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes on occasion, people accidentally pull on the strings when they're pulling their tampon out for the first time. Oh, okay. And we think that you probably need that first act of intercourse to help kind of push the strings back oh, nice. up and out of the way. Like, yeah, just kind of, you know, just going just gonna to put that off to the side for a second. Or like use a yeah. sex toy or, Absolutely. or something. Yeah, you even your own fingers. Definitely. Yeah. So, you know, usually we try to wait. That's not a hard and fast rule. Um, but you can absolutely use a menstrual cup or a tampon. Just be a little bit careful when you're removing it the first time. Yeah. If at any point you're experiencing more pain than you'd expect with the removal, um, that would be a good time to do a string check. So, uh, to do a string check. Oh, you should yes. probably mention that. Okay. So, I really struggled with this right. at first. So find whatever position you think is most comfortable for your own body, okay? Um, place one finger inside, cervix kind of feels like a nose, okay? And basically right there you should feel kind of like a little fishing lure mm -hmm. or a little string just below it. If you can feel only nose, kind of consistency, rubbery little donut, and you don't feel a string from it, then you should call your healthcare provider. Um, you may need a scan just to make sure the IUS is in the right place. So we've talked about so much. Thank you, thank you so much for like lending your expertise. You know, I just want to thank you for your time coming all the way out here to Canada just to talk to me. <laughs> um, I think it's great you're giving a voice to your followers, you know, and I think that their concerns are super valid. Anything they talk to you about online, they should be able to talk to the healthcare providers. Mm, but you know what, yeah. creating a safe space for them to have that conversation is just as important. So thank you. Um, thank I you. was watching your YouTube videos and I was very inspired. Ah. So I actually, um, <laughs> took my own staff uh, genital cookies. So, oh, wow. so here we go. So um, I have a, a uterus one. Yes, the uterus. Yep. And cervix. Where do we no, go? vagina, cervix, uterus. Yep. Fallopian, Fallopian tubes. tubes. You know, we were talking about male contraception. So, you know, we've got our little penis here. And for those of you who are pro vasectomy, you know, just right there, just right a there. little snip, And snip. is that also where the like injection Gel yes, that's where thing. it's going to go. It's probably going to go a little bit lower right there, um, but just a quick little uh, in and out um, for yeah. you right there. Yeah. And then, and then this is what we're trying to avoid. Right. So, <laughs> you know, I will say what I love about my job is that when people do have a pregnancy, you know, if they're in a place in their life where, you know, they're the best position to have a pregnancy, surrounded by the people that are important to them, I think that's great. Um, but until then, absolutely, let's kind of just keep that part off of the cookie, uh, you know, and deal with the rest of the, yeah. the person. Oh, that's the bladder there. Yeah. And then here's the so, vagina. Yep, so we got the, the spine here, epidural wow. going in there if somebody wants to do that. Um, and the vagina's right there, the uterus is right there. This uh, this baby's probably nine months and ready, ready to, to go. go. Yeah, that little umbilical is... cord and placenta up there. Yeah, that baby's ready to go. Yeah. Can we eat these? Definitely. Okay, I'm gonna try it. Okay. Mm. Oh, that's yum. Mm. Mm -hmm. They turned out pretty well. Good. <laughs> we seriously could have chatted all day for hours longer, but the uh, film crew were kind of like, uh, that's it guys. We're like, but we have so much more to say. Please let us continue talking. Clearly all round amazing human and very smart. And it was really cool to hear the perspective of a expert of a gynecologist about contraception. So I often get asked, how do I choose the best contraception for me? And by me, I mean you. How do you choose the best contraceptive for you? And from that chat and from my own research and experience, I've come up with four questions to ask yourself that will hopefully help you narrow down some of the options out there. And then obviously just go to your doctor and talk through those options with them. But these are some of the questions that you should maybe be thinking about and milling around in your head and having some idea of what your answer is to them. Number one, why do you want to go on contraception? You may think that the answer to this is simple, obviously to prevent pregnancy. And yes, that is one solid good reason 
to go on contraception. But not everyone who uses contraception is either having sex or having the kind of sex that can result in a pregnancy. So people might want to go on contraception to alleviate any PMS symptoms or control their menstrual cycle or to alleviate any kind of gender dysphoria that they might get around having their period. And contraception can also potentially do all of those things. If any of those reasons other than not getting pregnant are important to you, definitely mention that to your doctor when you go for an appointment because they will be able to give you the best advice on what would help best. Number two, if you are someone who can get pregnant and you are having the kind of sex that could potentially get you pregnant, then ask yourself when, if, do you want to have children? Is it in the next year? Is it in the next five years, 10 years? Is it never? Because that time period may affect what type of contraception you use because some are short acting contraceptives and others can last up to five to 10 years. Number three, are you good at remembering things and habits? Basically, can you remember to take a pill every day? Can you remember to change a patch every week? Can you remember to change a vaginal ring every three weeks, I think it is. Can you remember to make an appointment with your doctor every eight to 12 weeks to get an injection? There's lots of things that you have to remember. And you, you know, you've got to be on top of it. And if you are a bit forgetful with remembering your contraception, then that may lead to unwanted pregnancies. So bear in mind if you are good at remembering things or if you are a forgetful person. Always good to know yourself. And number four, what are your lifestyle choices? So what is important to you in order to live the life that you want to live? Do you go traveling to different time zones a lot? Is being able to control your period important to you? And do you want a hormone-free contraceptive? These things may or may not be important to you or part of your life, but are always important to be aware of and think about when picking your contraception. So thank you so much for watching and thank you to My Contraception for sponsoring this video. You can check out the website. I'm gonna leave the link in the description and you can find out loads about all of the different contraceptive methods. I would highly recommend playing around with it and having a look at all of the different options out there. Please like this video if you enjoyed it and let me know in the comments if you are on any contraception and why you picked that one, I'd be curious to hear. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell because I make new videos every Tuesday and I'll see you in my next video. Bye, yay!